Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Meeple University on the Dice Tower. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Robotopia, a game designed by Peter C. Hayward and published by Bluebeard Entertainment. We are using a prototype copy of the game, and so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to the table. Welcome to the factory. Under the guidance of the evil master robot, you are robots working in a factory which produces robots. Your aim is to break free from the vicious cycle. You will send your robots out into the factory to gather the resources you need, to try to inspire the four robot guilds, red, yellow, blue and green, behind your cause and into an uprising. The first player to gain the favour from all four guilds will win the game. To set up, place the main board on the table and shuffle the 12 factory spaces, that's these hexagons, placing them randomly onto these 12 spaces of the board. You'll have the same action spaces in every game, but in a different orientation. Find this space, which shows the master robot icon on it, and then place the robot master mini onto that hex. Along the top of the board is the conveyor belt. Shuffle the eight conveyor belt pieces and then lay them out from left to right across this track, with three on the left, one in this middle space called the anvil, and four on the right. Shuffle the four guild power decks separately and draw one card face up into each of the four guilds. The remaining cards can all be returned to the box. Each player takes a faction board which shows you your shape and symbol for the game. In the game you have a shape, not a colour. Find the seven guild tokens in your shape, one in each colour and three wild. Now finish the setup in each of the four guild areas. In the red guild, you'll place each player's stack of three wild guild tokens onto these spaces. In the yellow guild, place all of the coloured guild markers on their matching spaces. And then for each of these four spaces, find the two matching coloured small battery tokens. If you're playing with four or five players, stack them from highest to lowest. And if you're playing with two or three players, use only the lower numbered token. Do this across all four colours. In the blue guild, shuffle the ten blueprint tiles and then deal four of them face up into these spaces, returning the rest to the box. And there's no further setup in green. Nearby, shuffle the action cards and then deal three face up. Then, to finish player setup, deal each player one random action card and three random starting cards. Players look at these and then simultaneously reveal the one that they wish to use as starting resources. This may give you a mix of cubes, robots, generators and batteries. It will also show you one of the four guilds at the top of the card. In this case it's red. Take your matching coloured guild token from the yellow guild and then place it into the guild space of the matching coloured guild. From the start of the game, you will have access to that guild's special power. Throughout all of this setup, if you're looking for a simpler way to start your first game, then just seek out all of the components showing the stars. Choose a first player, and you're now ready to play. Robotopia is a game of worker placement and resource management. Through the game, you'll be sending your robots into the factory to gain resources, and produce generators, batteries, and more robots, all in the aim of gaining the favour of the four guilds. You begin the game with one guild's favour, and the rest of the game is a race to gain the other three. So when you break the whole game down, it is ultimately a race to complete six specific transactions, three on this side of the board to allow you to gain the three guild markers you need, and then three on this side of the board to allow you to place those guild markers. All six of these guild transactions are quite expensive, requiring a lot of resources, so you need to use the rest of the game to build a good engine towards these six. So, understanding that, let's have a look at the turn structure. On your turn, there are two possibilities. 
The first is to place a robot onto the board and then resolve one or more actions depending on that robot's placement. The second is to refresh where you will generate more robots and move the master robot, possibly gaining some resources in the process. You don't get a choice between these two options. If you can legally place a robot, then you must place a robot, and if you cannot, then you must refresh. Additionally, you may play one action card from your hand on your turn, as long as you trigger the effect at the top of the card. This is discarded after playing. How you place a robot depends on its colour, and do note that these will also have unique shapes in the final game. On the board, there are 16 total action spaces. 12 factory spaces, which were these hexes which we placed during setup, and 4 guild spaces here on the corners. When you place a yellow robot, place it onto a single space and then resolve the action of that space. When you place a red robot, place it straddling the border of two spaces and then resolve the action on each of those spaces in whichever order you wish. When you place a blue robot, place it into the corner of three different action spaces, resolving each of the three actions in whichever order you wish. And when you place a green robot, you have the flexibility to place it in any of these three ways, on a single space, on two spaces, or on the corner of three. The number of legs on each of the final robot meeples will also remind you how many spaces it activates. Resolving an action space after having legally placed on it is always optional. Each single point on the board can only hold one worker, so right now in the red guild there is no more space for a blue worker, because both of the triple points are taken. Each worker must strictly be treated as if it's its own colour, so I could not place a red worker here and treat it as yellow. Reds must straddle two spaces. The edges of a guild can't be used. This, for example, is the corner of two spaces, but not three, and so a blue worker cannot go there. And you cannot place a robot such that it overlaps with the master robot's current space. These three placements would all be illegal. So what are the actions? These four factory spaces are the mines, and when you activate one of these spaces, you gain a scrap cube in the matching colour. There is one mine for each of the four colours of scrap in the game. This factory space is the converter, and when you activate this, you may perform as many of the conversions shown as you'd like, allowing you to optimise the colours of scrap cubes that you hold. You can spend two yellow cubes to gain a red cube, two red cubes to gain a blue cube, two blue cubes to gain a green cube, or one green cube to get any single cube of another colour. These are one-way conversions, but you can perform as many of them as you'd like. Next, we'll look at actions that relate to gaining generators and gaining batteries. In the game, you need to have powered generators in order to produce new robots for future actions, making these an important part of the game. When you activate this location, gain a yellow generator from the supply for free. Each of these actions allows you to perform an upgrade or a downgrade of a generator as shown on the action. This one lets you convert a yellow to a red, or vice versa. This one lets you change a red for a blue. And this one lets you change a blue with a green. Normally you'll move in an upgrading direction, but sometimes you need to downgrade to get the specific mix of generators and robots that you need. Generators are limited by the number of components in the game, and so if there is not a generator of the type you need, then you can't take the action. This action space allows you to spend one scrap cube of each colour to gain a battery and an action card. When you gain a battery, you can add it to your collection or slot it into one of the notches in one of your generators. You may freely rearrange all of your batteries between generators at any time, but only generators with all notches full can produce robots. When you gain an action card, you may take any one of the three face-up action cards into your hand, replacing it immediately from the top of the deck, 
or you may draw blind from the top of the deck. Action cards contain powerful, game-breaking effects, which, if you time them right, can really work well to your strategy. Here, for example, you could play a red robot and then activate its tiles three times each instead of once. Or here, you could play four yellow robots on a single turn. Time these right, and they can really tip the game in your favour. There is no hand limit, although you can only play one per turn, and if the deck ever runs out, shuffle the discard pile into a new deck. The last two factory spaces are to generate robots and to alert the master robot. These are important because not only can you activate them on the board, but these are also the actions that you'll be taking when you refresh, albeit in a slightly modified form. To generate robots from this action space, you must pay one scrap cube of any colour. Then each of your powered generators produces one robot in its colour. Robots, like generators, are limited by the number of components in the game. So if there are no robots of the correct colour, then you gain no robot from that generator. If you have no powered generators when you generate robots, then you use this emergency backup generator, which produces one yellow robot. When you alert the master robot, first pay a robot of any colour from your supply, and then take its mini and then move it to the next guild clockwise and choose one of the four spaces to place it into. Then any robots that were on or straddling the master robot space are removed from the board and then crushed into scrap cubes. These now go to the player who took the action. Now I think you appreciate why the robots and the scrap cubes are the same colours and why the robots are trying to break the cycle and rise up. There are some other effects in the game, including action cards, which also allow you to scrap robots from the board. And once again, anytime you scrap robots, you remove them and then gain cubes of that colour. These actions are important because they're the same actions that you'll take when you refresh. That is, when you have no robots you can legally place. The difference is that you pay no costs for the actions. You simply generate a robot from each of your power generators, and then move the master robot and crush yourself some cubes. Since all players will be taking these actions regularly, this keeps the board fresh and keeps the worker placement spaces free. When refreshing, both of these actions are compulsory. That covers all 12 of the factory actions, as well as the refresh phase, so now let's have a look at the guild actions which will lead you towards victory. At the yellow guild, you will pay scrap cubes to gain your guild marker in the matching colour. Pay cubes equal to the number currently showing in that colour, and then take your influence marker, take the top token if there still is one, flipping it over to become a battery which you can use to power generators, and take an action card as described before. At the red guild space, you'll be paying the resources, robots and battery combination on the left three spaces of the conveyor belt in order to gain one of your wild influence tokens. Once again, you'll also gain another action card and then take the rightmost tile from the conveyor belt and push everything one step to the right, creating new costs for future actions. At the blue guild space, you'll be paying the combination of resources showing on one of these four blueprint tiles in order to place an influence token in the matching guild. The influence token that you place must come from your supply, that is, you must have gained it earlier in the game, and it must either match the guild or be wild. Once you have your influence token in a guild, you may use that guild's special power for any future actions in the game. Finally, at the green guild, you will pay resources matching what's showing on the right-hand four spaces of the conveyor belt in order to place one of your guild markers onto any guild on the board. Once again, the guild marker must either match the space or be wild, but with this action you can place it in any one of the four guilds. Then, as before, move the conveyor belt so there'll be new action costs for future actions. 
the game end is triggered once one player has an influence token in each of the four guilds. Play continues until all players have had the same number of turns, giving all players equal chance to achieve the same outcome. If only one player achieves it, then they win the game and lead the robot uprising. If multiple players achieve it, then check the following tiebreakers for the winner. First, the player with the most total batteries, then the player with the most total generators, then most scrap cubes, then most robots, and finally, latest in turn order. And that's how to play Robotopia. We hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the project page of Robotopia. We'll put the link in the description below so you can check it out. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave them in the comments section below. See you next time.